Kimberly Edwards from cookingwithkimberly.com and tonight I am going to make you guys pizza from scratch. Now typically I would make a pizza dough from scratch myself, but I'm going to make it from scratch with the help of Wolfbang Puck's pizza dough mix, okay? That's just tonight, I wanna try it out and see so I can give you guys a review on it. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. First things first, inside this box we got one package of the mix for the dough and one tiny package of the yeast. Now this comes in a little envelope like this, okay? Grab yourself one quarter cup of warm water, not hot, not lukewarm, warm. Got me? This yeast needs a loving hug from some water that's warm to um, go ahead and balloon. Now this is a good way to make sure that your yeast is actually working and it's still active and alive because yeast isn't a live organism, okay? So if it doesn't start blooming in this little bowl, it's very important to proof it, this is what they call it, um, then if you don't do this, you won't know, right, if it's alive. So this is what you do. I'm gonna set this aside. I'm gonna let this go, I don't know, till I'm ready with the pizza dough, okay? So that's just gonna set aside with that nice warm water. If you're feeling yourself that day, go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of sugar in there because that's gonna help accelerate your yeast and give you a really nice fluffy pie pizza crust, right? Is that right, Mommy? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So here I am taking my own advice and I'm going to put maybe about, I don't know, a half a teaspoon of sugar in there. Sprinkle it on top and I'm just gonna make sure that these little yeast pellets are all wet, okay? Beautiful. Now. Set this aside. Next things next. I need this scissors again. I'm going to put this pizza dough, according to Wolfgang Puck, we're putting the pizza dough mix into a bowl with one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil and three quarters of a cup of warm water. Now, I'm just going to get this ready because I'm going to have to add the yeast to this as well. So, I need to wait until this yeast has bloomed until uh, I put, before I put it in. So out comes the pizza mix. This is enough to make one 12 inch pizza. I have a pizza pan ready um, for this purpose. This is what it looks like. It has breathable air holes through the bottom so that you can actually rise and get crunchy instead of just staying soggy on the bottom. I love that. I love that it's crunchy on the bottom when you use that pan. Okay, so there's my bag. I don't need it anymore. Into this is going to go one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil eyeballing it and I'm just going to sit tight I'm not going to add the um, the other water yet and I'm not going to add that yeast yet because I'm going to do it all at one time so we're going to sit tight okay so we're back mm. I have my yeast mixture and it has bloomed it is all fluffed up and frothy can you see it probably not here let's see if you can see it Ooh, uh, oh there it is let's fix the camera again <laughs> All right, so that's what it looks like. It's all frothy, fluffy. It's about raised off there, I don't know, half an inch from the surface with bubbles. That's how you know that this is still alive, it's still viable, it's going to make your pizza dough fluff up and be beautiful, okay? So my next thing is, what I've been doing in the meantime is I just got my, some of my um, toppings ready for my pizza. This is gonna be a little while because it's gotta rise and stuff, but I still like to be prepared. So I have my standing mixer now. You can use your food processor or your mixer, it says in here and it's gonna ask you to mix for five minutes. So I'm gonna mix it on, you know, probably a low, a low um, speed first so that um, everything can kind of get incorporated. If you put it on high, everything's gonna go all in your face, you're gonna be mad at me. So listen to me, make sure that you start it off on low and as it gets to be a little bit more incorporated, then you turn it up a little bit more. You're gonna mix for five minutes or until the sides clear away of the dough, okay? So it's gonna get all sticky and then it's gonna start combining and pulling away. Got me? So I can't leave you on here the whole time that this is mixing. It's gonna be loud as all heck, but that's the plan. So here we go. I'm putting it on two. I'm putting my three quarters of a cup of warm water. Ooh, I need to pull this up, hold on. Three quarters of a cup of warm water. I have that one tablespoon of olive oil in there. Now I'm using my dough hook for this, just to make sure that uh, it's pulling off like I want to. Now in here is, remember, there one quarter of a cup of uh, warm water with that yeast. I put a tiny bit of sugar just to help speed the process along, make it go beautiful. And we're just gonna let this go for a little bit. Now, 
I see that this is trying to combine, I'm gonna turn it off, and I'm just gonna stir in those dry ingredients just to get everything in there. Woo! I'm gonna get some on your arm too. So there you go. And I'm gonna let this go. Now I'm gonna let this go for about five minutes on about medium low speed. I'm on uh, number four, okay? So we'll be back in about five minutes or when your dough starts pulling away from the sides. Be right back. Okay, so I'm back. It only took my dough about a minute to come away cleanly from the sides. I'm not mad at that. Who can be mad at that? But I did let it go for just a little while longer. You don't want to let it go too far because you're going to make that go really, really um, uh, tough. You got me? You're going to make your bread really, really tough. Don't do that. Your dough. So what I did, you just want to combine it just enough so that it's combined in the mixer. And then what you're going to do is now I'm going to develop the gluten. Okay? And what that is, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to um, knead it. Okay? So I'm going to turn it out onto a work surface here. Remove this very right quick. There we go. Off of here. Now the dough is still quite sticky, even though it is pulling off the sides nicely. Okay. So now what? Sorry, box. Here we go. Move my drink over. I am going to sprinkle just a little bit of bench flour down. So. Sprinkle a bench flour onto your clean surface. This is my countertop and I like to knead on my countertop. All right, so I'm just going to spread that out. That's quite a bit of flour. Move the rest to the, to the side, you might need it. Gosh, I have hiccups, I apologize, my goodness. At least you know why I'm hiccuping. Okay, here we go. Let's get this dough out. Now, it's pulled all off, but it's still very sticky, like I said. Okay, so, excuse me. So we're going to need for two minutes approximately, okay? So go ahead, if you got a commercial on, go ahead and watch all the commercials and that's about two minutes. Um, this dough feels really soft and silky. Silky, it's very nice and that has a lot to do with that nice olive oil I put in there. Um, so here we go, well, two minutes. You don't have to watch me this whole time do this. But in order to knead, what you need is just a little bit of flour on your surface. You don't want too much because you don't want to incorporate way more flour than you actually require in here or it's going to be all dry and hard and like a hockey puck or pizza dough and that's not what we want. We want a nice, beautiful, crispy crust, right? So you put that little bit of bench flour down and you put your little ball of dough down, okay? So you're going to push away from you. Then you're going to pull back, okay? You're going to do a cork quarter turn, you're going to pull it towards you, push forward, turn it, pull back, push forward, turn it, pull back, push forward, turn it. That's kneading guys, there's nothing else to it. I know everyone looks like they're doing something really fancy schmancy, but that's it, over and over and over. More bench flour as it disappears, just a tiny, tiny bit, make sure you're using it sparingly, and keep working that dough. Develop the gluten. The gluten makes everything hold together, makes those beautiful bubbles in there. It makes things nice and crispy. Gorgeous. I'm back, I'm finishing the last little bit of my kneading. My mom is laughing at me because I have the hiccups. I'm sorry everybody. I've had them for like two days and it's just the way it is. You gotta work through it, right? There you go. Anyhow, see the things I do for you guys out there, my fans? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, this has never happened to me before. <laughs> it was just put it to music. This has never happened to me before, Michelle. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> Mom says she's gonna come and scare me. <laughs> Woo! Mom moves really quick. Be careful. Okay, I'm about done with this dough. Come see this dough, mommy. Can you? You can. Come check it out. I don't look beautiful, so okay. I'm not gonna be on camera. You look beautiful every day. Oh, yes. Here's my dough. It's, it's very beautiful. nice and soft. It feels great. Yeah, it's nice, right? Perfect. I think we're about done. I did about two minutes of kneading. I don't think it requires much more. Nope. This has been going really fast, and I'm not upset nice. with it. It's silky. Thank you, Wolfgang Puck. It's going according to plan thus far. We like things going to plan. That's what's up. Okay, so now. Yeah, that's so silky. It is very silky, is it not? 
Okay, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into a bowl. So I'm gonna grab myself a bowl. I am going to grease up my bowl slightly just to make sure that my dough doesn't stick all in there. Where's my, there it is. Just a tiny bit, use your little basting brush and just get it around the edges. All right, lovely. Okay, into my bowl goes my dough. I'm going to moisten this towel. This is a linen towel. Now, cover it up with a damp towel, that's what they say. Don't use one of these. We're gonna talk about this today. Don't use one of these fluffy ones. You know what I'm talking about, terry cloth looking like, like you get out of the bath. Don't use that. Use one that has no fluffies on it. It's very, very um, sm smooth. There's no fluffs coming off of it. That's a linen t um, tea towel. That's what you wanna use. You don't want fluffs getting on your dough. Come on. So I'm gonna go moisten this. I'm not gonna moisten it with co cold water. I'm gonna moisten it with warm water because I wanna keep this nice and warm. This is gonna rise for about 30 minutes. I'm gonna switch bowls because this is gonna rise a lot more than that bowl. I don't know what I was thinking. Don't do that. Grab yourself a big bowl because this is gonna rise. It's gonna double at least in size probably, okay? So moisten up your bowl, your bigger bowl. Dump it in. Moisten wet towel. We'll put this on the top of it. This keeps the top from getting all dried out and it allows it to stay moist so that it can stretch and move and grow. Got me? This is gonna go inside of my stove but I'm in my oven, but I'm not turning the oven on. I'm leaving it right there just so that it's a place that it's, you know, not getting any kind of breeze, not getting any kind of, you know, anything like that. It's gonna go in the oven. I think it's gonna be copacetic. It's gonna sit there for like 30 minutes. Okay, I'm just finishing up my toppings right before I'm going to finish my crust and get it ready. Um, I'm just slicing up uh, into quarters these little cherry tomatoes from our garden. I got some yellow ones, I got some red ones. That always looks beautiful. I picked some basil, our poor basil. It's trying really hard to be a big plant, but it's not very big. So I pulled off a couple leaves for that. I'm not using tomato sauce tonight on my pizza. You don't have to, whatever. There's no rule that says you need to do that. I'm putting, I'm gonna brush olive oil onto the bottom and that's also suggested by Wolfgang's box. So we're going to do that anyway. Um, and then I'm gonna put some mozzarella cheese. I made some mini meatballs. Make sure you check out that show, how to make mini meatballs. They're really good and tasty and they're great for pizza as well as soups and uh, pastas and you know, things of that nature. They'd be lovely. All right. Here's my tomatoes. Well, there goes my tomato. Ready? Now, if you want to put peppers on here, olives, whatever, whatever. Tonight I have the, the mozzarella, I have mini meatballs, I've got some mushrooms, I have those tomatoes, a little bit of basil, some parmesan, and some olive oil. It's gonna be gorgeous. Here we go. Let's move this out the way. Again, you're gonna need this um, a little bit floured surface so that you can get your uh, pizza crust ready. Perfect. Now, if you have a pizza stone, that's even better. If you've got whatever, you can do whatever, right? But if you want to, you can put some cornmeal on the bottom of this and that makes everything happy, happy, right? But I can't because I have holes in it. So I'm not going to be doing that <laughs> this evening. Okay, so my dough is here and my oven is preheating to 450 degrees. This is going to bake it for 10 to 12 minutes once I have it all prepared and ready. My dough has about doubled in size. It looks like that. Out it comes onto my floured surface. And I'm just going to work it out into the size of my sheet, my pen. Best you can. If you want to throw it up in the air, go ahead. Whatever. You can use a rolling pin if you really want to. I don't think it's necessary. This is better, you said, Mom? Mom says this is better. Do what Mom says. Mom's always known. Right, this is true. You don't want all that air out. You just want to press it down just to get it the shape. You don't want to push it. All right, onto my pan. I'm going to rearrange it into a much better size and shape. It's not so round, it's kind of square. It's okay, work it around. 
Make that nice out, outer crust if you want to, like a handle. Everyone likes a little bit of crust on their pizza dough, especially when you make it at home. It's different, isn't it? Yes. When you get, make it at home and when you get it from the store, I mean, it's it can be pretty shady from the pizza place sometimes, unless you got a really nice pizza place. So just work that to the edges. Make it pretty if you want to. Don't make it pretty. It's all gonna taste the same. It's all good. I like it rustic, actually. That makes me really know it's homemade. It's the point. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to look perfect. I want it to look beautiful, nonetheless. Is it rise now? Is it rise now? Is no. Rise no, ma'am. We're ready to go. So, I'm going to brush all of this with some olive oil. As soon as I find my brush. All right, olive oil fixes everything, doesn't it, Mom? Absolutely. All right. So I'm gonna brush the top with olive oil. Again, I said I'm not using sauce. You can use whatever sauce you want. You could use curry sauce if you wanted to. Curry, whatever, you know? Check out my um, review of that uh, curry sauce from Perfect Taste. That would be an awesome option mm -hmm. on here. And you could put some fabulous pieces of white meat chicken on there. Right. Stupid, right? You Ridiculous. You could put lamb or You could put, on you're right. You ain't never lying. Okay, so I'm making sure I get all the edges of that crust because that's what's gonna make it brown and beautiful. Right? Gorgeous. Here we go. Okay, now's the kind of the fun part. You can call the kids in for this part. <laughs> Sprinkle that cheese on all over nice and evenly. You can use whatever kind of cheeses you want. Experiment, I use all different kinds of stuff, but tonight I'm showing you kind of basic stuff. I have more so than anything. I want to show you how to make this Wolfgang Puck pizza dough. That's how we're gonna make a Wolfgang Puck pizza. Right, Mom? Mm -hmm. So, everyone needs to know how to do it. Just because it comes with directions on the back doesn't mean it's all very clear. And I have a lot of fans actually out there that prefer it when I do um, when I do recipes like this because they can read along on their box and they have it, right? But they'll read some kind of instruction on the back that makes them go, ah, I'm not really sure what to do with that. I don't know how to do it. So what they do is they go onto YouTube YouTube and look for me and here I am helping you make it right I'm telling you explain to you those little nuances that the box just assumes that you know All right, and if you're more advanced get out of here go find another recipe don't mess with us over here All right, so I'm going to sprinkle on just a little bit of chili flakes These are from Dragaria and if you haven't had them be very sparing with them They are extremely fresh when cracked this way this pizza is gonna be an inferno right now And I hardly even turned it um, when you use it in a grinder like this, as opposed to, you know, how you get it at an Italian restaurant, Mom? You have better control. Better control, but not only that, it stays fresher. Look at the holes mm -hmm. in there, mm -hmm. right? This is exposed. Everything's kind of dried out and blend. This stays nice and fresh, and it's freshly cracked. So when it's cracked, all those oils come out. This stuff doesn't get cracked, you just eat it whole. And it's not actually nearly as spicy as this stuff. So be very um, sparing with this stuff when you use it. And that's kind of good too, right? Because you don't have to use a whole bunch of one thing. All right, my lovely, delicious, tasty looking meatballs are going on here. They have a little bit of smoked paprika in them and um, a little bit of caraway. So make sure you try those out. Make sure you check out that recipe. All right, gorgeous. Next. I'm gonna put some of my mushrooms on. I don't like putting the cheese on top of all my ingredients because I like to see my ingredients. I think they're pretty. I think it's nice to look at fresh food and, and the presentation of it. Um, if you cover it all with cheese, you don't see anything. You just, you, know, you see gooey cheese. You can do it too, but whatever. All right, now you could, um, Already saute these mushrooms up if you like, but you don't have to. Tonight I'm not doing it just for time purposes, but you can do that if you like. What I will do though, is I will just graze over each one of these mushrooms with a little bit of olive oil, just to help them um, get cooked up faster and easier and more in a more tasty way. I don't want them drying out. You know how sometimes you get pe uh, pe mushrooms on your pizza and they didn't cook them beforehand. They were raw or they didn't come in a can. You know how they use right. the canned ones. Um, they'll use the fresh ones and it'll just be all dried out mushrooms on top. And that's not what you want is dried out mushrooms. You want cooked mushrooms, but not dry. I think this um, olive oil is going to help that situation greatly. Next, I'm just gonna sprinkle on these little tomatoes that I got from my garden. Well, mom got from our garden today. Yellow ones, red ones, they're cool. 
That's gonna be my quote-unquote sauce flavor. <laughs> That's what you get. Beautiful. And I'm just gonna break up. I know, like I said, my basil plant is struggling, but it's trying. Well, we have just, a, they're just peeking through. They're the just ground. peeking through. They're like this big, but we do have a couple leaves, and I'm just going to tear them and rip them and put them on the top. This gorgeous pizza. This smells oh, so good. There is nothing like fresh stuff from your own garden. Even if you buy fresh basil from the grocer, it does not smell like this. It's like you can't duplicate it. You can't duplicate the hard work and the, the like effort. It's like put something on it to make it last longer. Yeah, like a preservative or they, they gas them, you know, and the gas um, keeps them longer so they can transport them. But then everything kind of tastes bland and or funny or like an aftertaste, right? You don't like that? Anyhow, this looks gorgeous and beautiful. This is a Friday night pizza. Instead of going and spending 20 something odd dollars on a pizza for your family, uh, yeah, you can come home and do this. You have full control of everything that goes on there. And the kids will have fun helping you too. All right, so my oven is preheated to 450 degree degrees. This is going in for 10 to 12 minutes. I'm actually gonna set the timer at eight just to make sure all is well and copacetic and we're not having a great big issue for some weird reason. And this is going in. Don't forget I have those little holes on the bottom of this so that it can breathe and it can help me get my crust nice and crusty, and crunchy on the bottom. But wait, I forgot my pepper. We just um, cut a pepper out of our garden today. I'm really excited about it. I'm going to really thinly slice them, long strips. Now I really like it too, Mom, when they serve it in those round discs. You know how they cut it? Um, yes. I like that a lot, but it's much harder to do. It is pretty because the round of the uh, pepper is so gorgeous, right? But these are nice too, nice strips. I'm cutting them nice and thin just because I want it to be a little more dramatic on here. Pretty. There's a gorgeous red pepper from my garden. Make sure you check out the um, Cooking with Kimberly store. There's all kinds of seeds and things that you can get from me. Check it out at shop.cookingwithkimberly.com. And don't forget to use the discount code Kimberly for 15% off your order. And that's it, that's all. Cool? All right. So onto my pizza is gonna go with some nice strips of red pepper. Just, that's just kicked it up, mom. Visually speaking, I must say. And they're nice and sweet. I can smell them. Oh, mom, would you like a, one of these raw, a slice? Let's see what our pepper plant's Love like. Mmm. Looks beautiful. Oven is telling me it's ready. It smells awesome. I peeked in there and it looks golden brown and delicious. Let's bring it out. Come see mom. What a gorgeous pizza. Look at that. Oh wow. What a triumph. Look how it how it rised. Look at the how it rised nicely. Honey, it's so it's gorgeous. Thank you, Wolfgang Puck. It worked exactly as he said it would. Actually, ours looks prettier than his on the box. It's a work of art. Just saying. Anyhow, um, it says accentuate with pizza seasonings if desired, as we did. You may put more seasoning on if you like, whatever, whatever. But I'm actually going to take this out of the pan and we're going to um, slice up a piece for my mommy and me. Mm, I'm wow. peeking underneath you. It's even golden underneath. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see what we got going on underneath. Let's show our viewers. Looks good. Nice. It's nice and crunchy. Mm -hmm. It's uh, really risen. It rose beautifully and it rose even more in the oven. I'm going to take my handy dandy, you know, we're going to cut nice mezzaluna. slices. Huh? Mezzaluna? Yes, the mezzaluna. I just like saying the word mitzaluna. I don't have a big enough cutting board, so I have to make do. You do what you gotta do. Come on, grab a piece, mommy. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. I don't have a pizza slicer, so someone send me one. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. No, it's broken. Yes, ma'am, it's broken. We broke it. 
here. Here we go. I now have a nice eight slice pizza. This is touted to be a 12 inch pizza on the box. And we're ready. Come on and eat, mommy. I already have plates. Before. Yes, ma'am. Let's do this. Wowzers. Ooh. I use pizza mozzarella as well. Oh, you don't want to come on camera. That's no. right. Mom's allowed to do whatever she wants. She's mom. Whoa. It's going to be too hot to even bite into, isn't it? Heavenly. It smells so good. Mm. It smells so pretty. Tell me, mommy. Este bueno? Muy bueno. Muy bueno? Mm -hmm. I want some chili flakes on mine just because I'm a glutton for punishment. I like spice. Yeah? Tell me about it. I like it just the way it is. You like the crust? Tasty. Uh -huh. Mmm. Wow. Look at that crust. Mommy, that's so good. See that crust? That's a winner. Wolfgang, I'm impressed. I'm happy with you. Thanks for coming out tonight, Wolfgang. Have a four five night Friday. Exactly. Happy Friday, Mommy. Happy Pizza Friday. Cheers. This is delicious. I'm so not mad. I hope you go, guys, and check that out. You can follow, I find all of Wolfgang's stuff on his site at wolfgangpuck.com. And that's what the box looks like. It's Wolfgang's Pizza Dough Mix. It's the bomb. That's all I gotta say. Anyhow, that's how you do it. That's how you make it. And I hope you check out Mom's website at ingridturnertoday.com. Say bye, Mom. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> I hope you follow me on Twitter, Cooking with Kim E with a capital E. I hope you like the fan pages, facebook.com slash cookingwithkimberly. My shows are on ifood.tv slash cookingwithkimberly and youtube.com slash cookingwithkimberly. And my site is cookingwithkimberly.com. Come interact with me. Let me know what's going down. Let me know what kind of pizza you like on Fridays. All right, everybody, be a champion in your kitchen and eat deliciously. Bye.